it's Rick Taylor. Yo, what's up, man? It's your boy Rick Taylor, man. I'm here with my boy Mo City, man. Not much, man. We just want to see what's going on with you, man. See how you been, you know? Yeah, man. We've been good. Staying busy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's about it. You know, putting up shots, making every day better, you know? Yeah. All right, now, it's a lot of people that don't know who you is. A lot of people do, but there's some people who don't know who you is. Yeah. So, you know, I just want to ask some, like, you know, some regular questions, like, um, where are you from? Like, where were you born and raised? Um, born and raised in Milwaukee. Um... All my family from down south. Um, that's pretty much where I'm from in my roots, Mississippi and Arkansas. Um, got family in Memphis now, but they ain't from Memphis originally. So, yeah, that's who I am, man. I'm born and raised here, so, yeah. Uh, when did you start rapping? Just like everybody else when they was a kid, you know what I mean? Um, started rapping, like, when they was a kid, but I didn't give a fuck about rapping for real. Um, at all until my dad died. My dad was a rapper, you know. what I mean, I always was just like chilling, playing basketball and stuff like that, cooling with the homies. I ain't really have no like real life goals or nothing. So uh, yeah, I started rapping because he died. So when he died, it was my way, you know, keeping that connection. Yeah. So pretty much, just your dad was your inspiration, or did you have any other inspiration of why you did it besides your pops, like any artists or anything? Um, I mean, I always love like music. You know, just like everybody. Um, I grew up on West Coast music. Uh, a lot of down south music. Um, some East Coast. So, some of everything. But West Coast always had my my, my attention for sure. Um, like Ice Cube. You know, he's one of my favorite rappers type thing. So, it's like, yeah, that's what it is. But I really didn't have no inspiration to be no rapper for it. That's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, that's real. I like the fact that you said down south and west coast because, like, that's real common here. Yeah. Growing up for us, like, we had a lot of uncles who listen to down south, like, yep. A Ball, MJG. Yep. Listen to west coast, like, E40, Too Short, and all them, bro. Yep. Like, it's instilled in us to, like, that. that's our background where we came up off yeah, of. So, so, for a lot of people who don't really know you, like, who is Mo City? Like, we know you as an artist, but who is Mo City as a person? I mean, I'm a dad. That's first. You know what I mean? So it's like, and then as an artist, man, I'm just like a melting pot of everything I was brought up on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you said, if you, if the way I mm, mix me UGK, some Outkast, some Too Short, like you said, some E40. I love the Bay music. That's why I love slap music. You know what I mean? Because like, it's just one big old connection between the Bay, Detroit, Milwaukee. So I love all that. I love the whole sound. So yeah. That's what it is for me. I definitely feel that. How would you describe your music and your sound? Like, how, how would you describe your music? Um, So, uh, growing up, like, my favorite rapper was J. Cole mm -hmm. for a long time. It still is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. J. Cole, Kendrick, you know, Drake, Meek, all of them, you mm -hmm. know, and all that. But, like, in the beginning, I tried to rap like Cole. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I wanted to be like Cole, for real. But then, like, it was things in my life that was different from Cole, like, and I couldn't tell my story how he tell his. Nah. So then I started deviating the sound, started creating things, but my base, I guess, would be Cole, and now it's something completely different now. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. you got your own style, and I like yeah. that, like, it's definitely, like, inspired by, like, that smooth, chill music, like, yeah. I like, that's why I said I gravitate to your music a lot, so, yeah. you and a couple artists here, man, yeah. and they inspire me to sometimes get behind Get back in the studio and make some music myself, man. I'm telling you, man, get to it, man. I mean, it's, it's a release, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a... If I didn't have it, I would legit be crazy. Yeah. For real. That's real. Um, I've been watching a lot of your videos, and I see you got some, like, dope-ass videos, bro. So, and I be wondering, like, man, like, how does he come... Like, how do you come up with your concepts for your videos? I watch videos all day. Yeah, okay. I watch videos. I steal ideas from people all the time. Um, no, nah, for real, I, I really do watch videos, yeah. like, I'm big on, like, the little things in videos, so, like, um, we do, like, Love Me was a, was a, was a one shot. No, I seen that, um, that was dope, by the way. Thank you, man. For, for sure, for real, for like, sure. yeah, so it was a one shot, I've been, I've been, like, enamored with, like, one shots for a while, I think i seen Wiz do it once, um, Division did it really well, 
um, Brent Fias did it really well. So I'm big in like cinematography. Uh, one day when I'm done with music, I want to score movies. That's that's really what I want to yeah. do. Yeah, man, and I definitely like those type of videos because I was like, man, I was watching you. I be watching your videos. I watch Violent Alexander videos. I be watching uh, Stax videos. And I be like, man, yeah. they got that shit that I would like to do. Like when I was doing music, I wanted to do this type of stuff, but at the time, I didn't put it into my music or my videos like that because I didn't really have too many videos. But I was like, if I was to do videos, those are definitely the type of videos I would have wanted to have did. Yeah, man, I tried to think outside the box, man. Um, mm -hmm. I'm tired of doing performance piece videos. Yeah, like yeah, that's, the camera. yeah, that's like it's cool, but it's like you know you want to do some different shit. Yeah, man, just yeah. mix it up. Yeah, the song I just heard. I mean, it's a video too. It was dope, and it took me back to like NPS days. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know that song for the culture. Like, how did that come about, and how did you get up on that song? Um, so True West hit me. Uh -huh. And she shout said, out to True West. Shout out to True. Yeah, you know that's the homie. So me, me and True been locked for a while now. Yeah. Uh, she hit me, said she got a song that she want me to get on. Mm -hmm. Um, then she told me Moody was on it and Lamo. Mm -hmm. Shout out to them too. Shout out Moody and Lamo too. By the yeah. way, y'all go hard. Um, and I was like, oh, I gotta do this. Uh, I, I have, like, I really work with either one of them for real. So it was just dope. It came about. I heard the beat. Um, Ken's made the beat. Uh, mm -hmm. Lucian recorded it, um, mm -hmm. engineered it, got us all sounding great. You know what I mean? So that's how it came about um, for the culture. You know what I mean? It was real organic. We got in the studio. We all had like some some like verses we had already had, but like towards the end, it just sounded a little bit different, which was dope as fuck. So you know, it all came together. Yeah, it came out real good, bro. Yeah. It definitely brought back them MPS days Super hearing good. that beat and the intro. You know what I'm saying? That was dope, bro. Um, your latest project, Bench Warmers. Yeah. I'm still listening to that to this day. Thank you, bro. My, you know, my favorite joint off here is Dark Vader, bro. It's something about that song. Yeah, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I want to um, ask you, like, how do you feel about the outcome of that project? Like, of what the people just, like, think of it? Knowing that you dropped it during the pandemic and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I was scared as hell. So, mm -hmm. originally, we were supposed to drop it in 2019. Yeah. Uh, me, Jen, and, and Lamo had a conversation uh, uh, about dropping our projects around the same time within the same three month radius, and I'm the only one who didn't live up to it. Cause mm -hmm. like I went back to the drawing board, I was like, man, I didn't make a whole new album. Um, by the time it came out, so um, so Biz Warmers didn't sound nothing like how it sound now. <sighs> That's crazy. It was like maybe three songs, four songs that actually made it onto the actual project out of thirteen. So um, damn. Yeah, bro. We went. We locked back in. Um, we started recording again that February. We were supposed to drop like September, October ish, but mm -hmm. we ended up started recording again in February, and we got it done in like April, and then that was it. That was the monster. But I mean, dropping in the middle of a pandemic wasn't ideal. It's not what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I think it was cool. It worked out for me because everybody was at home. And it, yeah, that's definitely a good idea because a lot of people was at home to the point where they ain't got nothing to do but either watch TV, listen to music, or just you know vibe yeah. out, bro. Yeah, and yeah. this is the most love and support I've gotten so far. Yeah. And I'm appreciative of everybody. You for telling me, you know, Darth Vader. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, bro. So. Like, I, I show love and give, you know, props to where it's needed, man. Because, like, I'd rather give people, give y'all y'all flowers while y'all here and shit and let people know, like, we people rock with y'all, bro. Thank you, bro, for real. You know what I'm saying? So, um, how, let me see. Uh, I meant to ask you... How do you feel? What What do you feel about the Milwaukee music scene? I love it. That's dope. Everything about it. Everything. Like, I love both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the the like the the slap side, which I love that shit. Mm -hmm. Like I told you. Yeah. You know. Um, and then I love the other side where it's like a little more conscious, a little more. They call it backpack. And then mm -hmm. I think we fall. What What me and my people, my boys do? We do. We fall somewhere in the middle. But I mean. is it back Because like You know it's crazy Because I used to always wonder Like what is the name Of the style of that I used to just call it Chill music bro Yeah I don't even know The name for yeah, it like, What kind of genre It's like a different genre Within itself bro Bro it, Like it's crazy to me Because when people Call our style Or that side Backpack I'd be like What it? Yeah, like, bro, like But at the same time though Like I'm cool with Whatever you want to call yeah. it As long as you listen to it I'll be uh, It's a vibe for me yeah. So uh, But it, definitely It comes from that Chill sound So But some people call it conscious. Some people call it backpack. Yeah. I mean, but I'm pretty sure all of them don't 
don't want to be labeled as slap slap music. Yeah, yeah. So it's just one of the things. And you know what's crazy? Because I always gravitated to that type of music when I was like younger. Like I knew from a jump, like I like this smooth sound, this conscious sound, this conscious music sound. I, I just knew that from the jump. Like yeah, yeah. this is definitely the. That type of sound I would want to do if I yeah. was an artist, and I see a lot of artists from here doing that. Yeah, like both sides. I like both sides as well, but like yeah. that smooth stuff, like always, like always gravitated towards that. Me so, too. Yeah, that was dope. Um, I mean, I just think it's just more authentic for me and my yeah. lifestyle. I ain't running around here super thugged out, so yeah, I, I'm cool most of the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. and you know, I used, when I used to rap, I had my little side. You know, everybody grew up rapping about some shit they don't do, mm-hmm. and I started just like I need to. If I'm gonna be an artist, I need to gravitate to my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a a smooth chill dude, so, so yeah. that should be my preference. But uh, yeah, um, how did you feel about being asked to play a role in Slap City? Loved it. Yeah. Man, like, my thing is, I love everything Milwaukee, period. Yeah. Like, like, so when I heard about it, I was just itching to be in it. You know yeah. what I mean? I was like, this is dope. I mean, I don't care if I would have held the lights or something. You know what yeah. I mean? It was just dope to see, work with some people in the city that I've never worked with before. Yeah. Um, and other, seeing all this melting pot of artists from so many different backgrounds come together. Right. Just dope as shit, bro. Slap City is like a major highlight in my life right now, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate you for doing it, cause like I've I've known, like I've met you before, and I was like, man, I fuck with bro. Like I remember I, first time I met you, I was with Ray. He was shooting a video for y'all. Yeah. yeah. And um, I don't know. Who, I think it was your video, but I know Miss Mocha. She was there. Yeah. She was putting it together. Yeah. And that's when I met y'all, and you and Fifth now. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, they cool, bro. And I'm like. It came to one of your shows, yeah. so I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna meet bro. I want to chop it over, bro. I want to work with bro. Yeah, bro. Saying some kind of way, but it, and, it, and, it, and it, it worked out. You, you know, know what I mean? saying? So that was dope, bro. I appreciate you for yeah, that, bro. It's nothing, bro. Thank you. Oh yeah, no problem. Now, since you're in Slap City, and you, I heard you say you want to like get some movie scores and stuff like that, could you see yourself doing more acting? Um, maybe. Yeah. Um, I be honest with you, I ain't really never thought about it. Yeah. Um. My main focus is music um, mm. at this point. But maybe, I don't know, when we 40 something. Yeah, hey, hey, ain't no telling where it might take you. Ain't no bro. telling, you know. I ain't even saying next year I'm going to be in nothing. I'm just telling you that right. my mind is. Yeah, well, I, know, I know what you mean. But it was fun, though. Yeah. <clears throat> um, are you working on anything new right now? Yeah, man. Um, I'm working on a new album. Um, working on like four different albums. Yeah. Uh, me and my, my homegirl, Holly. She was on Love Me, um, working on the EP, which mm-hmm. is going to be super, super crazy. I have, right now, I'm finding more, like, um, I'm finding more happiness in making R&B music at the moment, right now, because I'm rapping all fucking day. I'm mm-hmm. just rapping, rapping, rapping. Like, I was in Houston for four days straight, rapping. I seen nothing in Houston. If I wasn't in the studio, I was preparing for the studio to go back into the studio, so I rap a lot. It's... it's it's just fun to do something that's really audio wheelhouse sometimes. That's yeah, fun. and that's so. why I used to try to do some um, R&B shit myself, but it didn't work too good. Hey, the song, the song you sent me was pretty good, though. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, bro. It was oh, really, yeah. actually really good, bro. So. Yeah, yeah. But appreciate it, man. I was trying, I'll be trying to do stuff different, you yeah, know bro. what I'm saying? My boy uh, uh, Smokey Jones and my boy T-Language on there as well. My so boy we Smokey, just gotta, you know, Smokey was on the yeah, album. Yeah, shout out Smokey Jones, man. Yes, yeah, and shout out T-Language, too, my boy. Yes, um... Yeah, um, speaking of that trip in Houston, how what was that trip like? How was it? Exhausting, mm-hmm. but worth every every minute of it. Mm-hmm. Um, rub elbows with a lot of good people, good people, um, needed people. Uh, I've never done, like, it was 12-hour sessions pretty much every day. So we do a 12-hour session. I go home. I would write all night. Go back to do another twelve hour session. I was barely eating. I was super focused. We I met um this guy Quentin out there. Um he won this singing competition on Netflix. Mm-hmm. We did some music. Uh so it was super dope, man. It was just it was dope being around a lot of creatives. It's it was it was dope being around certain people for sure for sure because they were deep entrenched in the game mm-hmm. and they taught me a lot. Uh I ain't gonna but yeah. It was it was it was a dope ass experience. Yeah, that's dope, bro. Like, 
it's good to see that you got the opportunity to go down to a different city like Houston, yeah. showcase your talents, and then you said the twelve hour studio sessions, man. I know you just like, man, this the life I wanted. So yeah, man, you I gotta know. you know prepare for it type shit. So you, know, you can't complain about you know. Yeah. Your plate and all you want to do is eat type shit. You know? Right, so. type shit. But that's dope, bro. Congratulations bro. on that. Thank you, bro. You're welcome for sure. Who's your favorite artist or producer to work with? Currently? Like, yeah, that you've worked with. That I've worked with? Mm, my favorite artist I've worked with is probably outside of the camp. It's got to be Stax or, or Fifth. Me and Stax is just because we pull the opposites. Mm -hmm. uh, he don't like to rap, for real. Um, that's all I really fucking do. Um, I'm cool on choruses. Like, I like making them sometimes. He love making choruses. Uh, he's super upbeat. I'm super, like, chill and shit. So we kind of, like, balance each other out. Mm -hmm. um, but legit, every feature I've worked with so far has been, like, a highlight of my life. I don't, I don't think people understand, like, I'm really fans. <laughs> I'm really a fan of everybody in, in Milwaukee. And it sounds like corny or some shit, but that's just what it is. Like, well, I ain't corny, bro. It's just, like, I mean, just... A team player, you want to see your city win. I do. That's all, everybody. Bro. Legit yeah. everybody. Like, I listen to people that people don't even expect me to listen to. Yeah. And that's exactly how I am, bro. I listen to different, a lot of people. different. That are, like, a lot of different artists mm -hmm. that people probably wouldn't, like, never heard of or wouldn't listen to. And, you know, just, like, I'm always trying to just show support, bro. I want to see us all win, no matter who first, no matter, you know. Yeah. Just want to win, bro. bro. I don't care who make it, when they make it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't care if I, like, real life, I know I'm going to make it. But yeah. if you make it and I don't make it, that's fine. Right. It really is. Like, because I know I did everything I could yeah. to make it, to, you know, give myself the best opportunity. Right. And, uh, and you made it. And that's all you can really ask for. Ain't no, ain't, like, ain't no sense in hating on somebody else achieving a goal that you want to achieve. You know right. how hard this shit is. Exactly. You know what I mean? like, so, everybody got different paths to get into it. Like somebody might make it, somebody might not. Like your path might have been greater or worked more than the other person path did. You know. Yeah. So and it might not have been for them. So you know, but that don't mean they can't necessarily be involved. Exactly. In the um, same, you know. Exactly. In the same career. <clears throat> um, what artist or producer would you like to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Um. Artists, all right. So my artists, I would definitely want to work with, would probably be either. I got a couple of them. All right, so Sada, because I just think that shit would be weird as fuck. It would be fire as fuck. Mm -hmm. Like you just be like, this don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely um Saba, and probably uh, I definitely want to work with Larry June for sure. For sure. Yeah, I, fuck I, with I, I, I can see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. And then, no name. Those are my four people I want to work with. And on a producer tip, man, I got plenty of people I want to work with. Tip. Yeah. I'm talking about anybody from Swiss Beast to Monte Booker to St. Tobin. Yeah. To, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, just, I, to, just to, like, you know, be creating some classes or just exactly. just creating something new. Metro, Hit Boy. All that, man, I'm telling you, man, I'm I'm a student in the game. Type, you know, you right. Type shit, you know. Um... And my final question for you, um, what is your goal with your music like? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Next five years? What well, album we on now? We're working on two. Mm -hmm. Mixtapes under us now. So the next five years, I want to give everybody seven albums. No, hell no, that's too much. <laughs> like, I mean, it ain't too much, but I know what you mean, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, ain't, I ain't. Look, once I get on, I'm slowing down. Um, no, nah, but like, we're going to do... Next next five years, three more albums. Work with some of the features I've, I've mentioned. Um, make myself financially stable off of this in this alone. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that's where I see myself in the next five years. Um, and making a way for the city. You know, dope. Well, my boy, um, I do wish you, you know, good luck on your success on your on your journey, thank you, thank you. and I hope you get the success that you need. And that, that you deserve, because you've you. been putting in the work, my bro, and I've been seeing it, man. We've yeah, all man. been seeing it, and we rooting for you, bro. Bro, that means a lot, for real. Yeah, yeah. And even even you listen to the music, bro, you know how it is, bro. I came from a time where people, when, when he was happy to have 30 players on SoundCloud. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, no real, problem, no that problem. Means a lot. No problem, man. I appreciate you for, you know, sitting down with me, having this interview. 
You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a blessing, bro. Yeah, bro. I, bro, real life. And keep with the music, bro. Stay with it, bro. Fully. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking about getting back into it, my yeah. boy, and standing there. Because, like, it is, like, you know, like therapy and shit like yeah. that. So, it definitely, I can't, I can't run away from it. Even though when I try, I end up coming back to it just writing a song or just playing around. But, like, man, yeah, this, man. I love it. You never know what's going to be. Like, it, I done heard so many stories where people be like, I wouldn't even go. I wouldn't even go in the booth trying to make that type of song. And then mm. it was a hit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You never know what's gonna crack off. You never, and you never know what kind of opportunity. Man, you already know. Yeah, you already know. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, but man, we appreciate you, man. That's my boy Mo City, man. Check out his project. Yeah, man. Bench Warmers is out right now. iTunes and all these platforms, you know. And check out that Dark Vader video yeah. and more videos he got on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Man, we appreciate you, my boy. Thank you, man. Two phones going crazy. Fresh out of the favors. Now you really gotta pay me. No more local, now it's major. Let a nigga run the basis. They don't know what we facing. We was really in the basement. Honing in on the basics. I've been cracking on the daily. Inside going crazy. Outside, you never know. Never let these niggas fade you. Don't trip, keep it player. Solo rolling on the fatal. Caesar pointing with the laser. Made a nigga Darth Vader.